three. All right, we'll start with in-person questions and then we'll go to Zoom if we have some time. So Annie and then Alexa. Candice, when you, uh, when Sloot was shooting her free throws at the end of the game, it, it sounded like he said, I can play his game, her game, our game. Um, can you share with us, yeah, what your, what message you were sharing with your, your team as you exited the game? No, I just think our mentality, um, you know, has to be, especially when you're coming into a hostile environment like this, like we know Connecticut is a physical team. We know that, um, you know, we have our work cut out, you know, playing them and we knew game three was going to be a grind. Um, and, and that's what we try to do. We try to, um, you know, evolve and adjust to the circumstance and adjust to the game. And I think that, you know, when we're able to do that, you know, we're, we're, we came out on top just because we were able to, to adjust to how physical the game was and, you know, what we needed to do. This was a very evenly played game and all week, James, you've talked about the mental toughness of your team. Candice, you talked about it after game two. How much was that on display today every time you know, they went on a run, you guys um, exerting that mental toughness that James, you said separates the good from the great. I mean, we, you have to in this type of um, environment, it's the playoffs. Uh, so we, we have to build, we have to play on what we built throughout the season. And, and one thing that, you know, we've prided ourselves is, is uh, playing together throughout adversity. And I thought that, you know, we did a good job of it. Uh, we responded well to their runs. We didn't have any lows. And uh, even though it was a, a defensive and physical battle, I thought that, you know, uh, we were up for the challenge and uh, we came out victorious. Uh, James, building off of that, what were you so pleased about with your defense? Alexa, I can't hear you. You know, you talk too far away from okay. that mic. Is this any better? That's okay. better. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what pleased you the most about the way your team was able to respond defensively, especially in the fourth to hold uh, Connecticut to just 11 points? Uh, I thought we did a great job of um, not giving up any second chance opportunities. And we kept them out of transition because we weren't turning the ball over. So if it's a half court game, uh, we felt that uh, the odds were in our favor to, to put them into a difficult situation. Um, now they're a great team. Uh, but, you know, we, I thought we were executing really well defensively uh, when we were able to play five on five. And that's you, we just want to give ourselves a shot. So um, that that's that's what it all came down to in the fourth quarter, giving us a shot to play each other five on five and then rebounding out of it. Uh, Emma, one for you and James, one for you. Uh, 66, 64, this was deadlocked for quite a few possessions. Take me through what's going through your mind at that moment. Um, how much are you looking to be aggressive to get a shot in that spot and how much you're drawing on past playoff successes when you're doing that? Um, I think we've had a, a lot of close games this season, so we kind of know what we have to do. And especially against this team, you know, have to be very physical to get something open. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in the end that we did a really good job of moving the ball a couple of times. I don't think it was even a play. We just kept on moving and, you know, playing beautiful basketball, like we call it. Um, and that's what, Got us open. And James, just to that end, obviously, when you brought in Candace, it was with championship plays in mind that she made last year. Bringing Emma here, is that what you had in mind? And was that going through your mind as she did it? Uh, yeah, it's what I had. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, uh, they're great players um, and they've responded in great moments and big moments. And, and so we needed um, them to be who they are and, and respond in the big moments like today. And um, you know, this is what I had in mind. Uh, and, you know, we just want great players to be great. And so sometimes the best job I can do is just get out of the way. Yeah. All right. Candace, two things. First off, how's your eye? I can see. I'm good. Okay. Um, second thing is just the defense in that last, I guess, five and a half minutes. I mean, they scored to go up and then uh, Kai hit a three to put you guys up and you didn't show after that. I think they didn't score for four and a half minutes. Just talk about the defense in that last part of the game and how you held them to really nothing until the game was basically over. You know, I think, um, you know, we do it in a collective effort. Um, I think our, you know, just in terms of instinct and, and playing off of rotations, um, 
I was proud of us in the way that we made adjustments, you know, both individually and team de defense. And I think down the stretch, uh, we were able to kind of play to that. And um, I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, sometimes, especially in years past, we would play great defense and then we would give up the offensive board um, and we were able to finish the play. And I think that that, you know, that allows us to, to have the confidence to be able to play in secondary and to, you know, and to play fast. Hey, coach. Um, first off, just a question for you. It looks like any time that the Sun got on any type of run more than six, eight points, you called a timeout and you were really trying to mess up the momentum. Is that something that you were trying to game plan for heading into this game, knowing that it would lead to more runs? No, so I got um, 10 people on the sideline that I have to answer to. They make me do suicides if I, you know, try to let us go through runs. No, I mean, it's uh, a tactical choice that we don't want them to go and run. So we, we, we settle our composure. We settle our composure and, and uh, we just, you know, breathe a little bit, uh, get together on the sideline, and then we just try to come out of it okay. And then, Emma, for you, you really wanted to focus on your defensive effort after game one, and then today you had five, six steals. It, what have been the things that you've really been focusing on leading into yet game two and into game three defensively that allowed you to show out today? Just being active in defense. Like Hannah said, it's really a team effort. Um, it's being in rotation, being early. And I think if you do it fast, if you do it aggressive, it's what makes them you know, pull back a little bit and throw bad passes. So. It's just me being in the end and getting the ball, but before that, there was probably like three rotations that made it hard for them. Uh, Candace, I believe Emma used the phrase beautiful basketball a little earlier. Can you define that for me? Kind of explain what, what that means and what that looks like? Well, tonight, I don't know if it was uh, as beautiful as we wanted it to be. Um, but I think just it's playing, you know, we have playmakers on our team and you know, anytime you have a front court that can, you know, combine for what, 10 assists, um, 10 of our 20 assists, just in terms of us being in the middle of the floor and reading off each other. Um, Emma is one of the smartest players that I've ever played with and her instincts. And so you, you add that to Sloot, who's a playmaker and able to make plays. Um, we have high IQ players on our team. And so playing beautiful basketball, it means that sometimes it's gonna come down to just playing and reading and um that's a lot in secondary and that's a lot in transition is just reading each other and so uh we were able to to do that when it mattered tonight and i'd hope we would do it a little better um come tuesday any more questions for players and coaches all right thank you cool. you didn't call me ace first interview don't call me candace
Hello. Okay. Hello. We have Dawana Bonner and Natisha Heidemann. Um, we'll start with questions in the room, and if we have time, we'll go on Zoom. Please just limit it to one question and then a follow up if you need to. Thanks. Um, you know, DB, you guys tonight, you know, missed yeah. a lot of, you know, just easy shots in, inside. What do you think was causing you guys so much, uh, you know, struggles in the paint? Um, they're tall, they're big, they're long, but I think we focus too much on getting the foul instead of just going to going up through them and finishing. So we have to do a better job if we want to beat Chicago than finishing our, our paint, point paints. And just how does that, you know, frustration as that continues to happen throughout the game, just how does that kind of frustration um, mountain contribute? I know it happened to me in the first half, but I wasn't really worried about it after I regrouped. Uh, uh, but for everybody else, we're still going to go in there. We're still going to try to get it in there. That's what we everybody knows we played through the paint. So uh, we just got to do a better job of finishing. Hi, Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. Kurtz talked a lot about this championship window that you guys have been in. And I wonder how important the response from this collective team um, coming together, pulling together, and responding in game three. Um, how, how much are you guys stressing that after this loss already? Um, you, when, once you start stressing, then they already got you beat. Uh, we just got to go in. We got to adjust. Uh, that's what we have another chance for, to step out on the court and, and try to beat them again. Uh, but I don't think we're stressing about it. We're right there. We were four points, you know, out of this win. So we're going to go back, watch video, uh, have practice, and uh, re regroup. We got to make our shots, though, for sure. You can pass it back. Yep. Go ahead. Can you just speak to Natisha's game tonight and how she looked? And then, Natisha, can you also say kind of your thoughts of what was going through your head when you were playing okay. tonight? Okay. <laughs> um, I would just say, you know, they – there's a lot of attention on everybody and I'm just shooting the shots that I get that I'm open and they're going in and uh, we got a game plan and we just got to execute it. So when we're executing the game plan, everybody's getting touches, everybody's getting shots. Um, yeah, she was aggressive. We told her uh, they not, but she's the best shooter on the team. She's our best three point shooter on the team. So if they're not going to guard her, knock it down, uh, make them pay. And uh, she was really aggressive. I, I talked to her before the game and I was like, be aggressive. Uh, you know they're going to trap you, so uh, get around it, make the pass, get through it. And she did a hell of a job tonight, so she just got to keep it up one more game here at, uh, at our house. And hopefully we can pull out the win. Go ahead, Alexa. Uh, DB, the fourth quarter, there was a little bit of a stalemate there where neither team could really score, and then Chicago went on that run. What was kind of happening there, and um, what did you think either didn't work or wasn't working really? In that I don't run? know. That's a good question. I, I feel like... We were being aggressive. Uh, like we still missed the points in the paint in the, in the fourth quarter, but uh, neither we, neither one of us were letting each other score. We both was holding down on defense. So I'm proud of my team for that. But uh, we got to put the ball in the basket. Uh, we got to score. We got to score way more than uh, the easy ones. And I think we we don't put ourselves in this situation. Any other questions in the room? Uh, for for both of you, I'm, I'm curious. John Paul Jones seemed to struggle to be able to get opportunities after that first quarter. It was, there was one shot uh, in each of the second, third, and fourth. What were they doing defensively? And are there adjustments you guys can make to make sure that JJ is getting more shot opportunities uh, down the stretch of this uh, game four? Um, I think we, they were being really aggressive on it. They were doubling on the block. Uh, so she was looking for the pass out. It was hard for her to get going. Um, they just, they're really big, they're really long. Uh, even when they sub, they have Stevens coming in and they're just really long in the paint. And we're not, they know we want to score in the paint just like they do. So uh, we, were, we were doubling and uh, she kind of struggled tonight, but she'll bounce back. Yeah, I would say the same. Um, JJ is an all-star like many on our team. So she's getting a lot of tension, um, double team. Sometimes it's even three people on her. So um, just putting her in better positions to, to score is what, what we need to do. Lila. Um, just, you know, for both of you guys, just what was the mindset going into this game? You know, Curtis talked about, you know, wanting to get more production from, you know, the guards in the series, just, you know, you guys and Courtney stepping up in this game. What was the mindset coming into it? Step up. Uh, we know what we did in Chicago. Uh, not scoring a basket is unacceptable. Um, and then we, we kind of got embarrassed. I feel like last game, game two, they embarrassed us. They just... It was almost like a video. They were moving. We were behind, getting back doors. We was uh, they were offensive rebound. So we just wanted to play better. We know we can play better. We know we're a better a better group than that. So uh, nothing to prove to anybody. It was just more so to prove to ourselves that we can play better. 
Uh, Chicago's been really good in, in crunch time throughout the, the season and just across the league. Um, is there anything particularly different about their intensity and energy and kind of just mindset at the end of games that has made them so successful? And, and how do you guys kind of try to combat that? That's a good question. I feel like that's a question for them more so than us. But uh, I like, like Alexis, that Alexis said, neither one of us was scoring in the fourth quarter. We both went on when we were missing, but we were playing great defense. So um, I don't know if it's so what kind of ex ex execution they do, but we got to put the ball in the basket in the, in the right time, in the crunch time. Uh, I think we were being aggressive, but we just got to, we got to make it. We'll finish it up with Ned. Go ahead. Hello, Dawana. Um, turnover tonight, obviously a big problem for you guys. Was it more of them just getting you guys sped up too much at times, or was it just y'all just speeding up maybe when you should have just eased a little bit? Um, I think we got a little bit too sped up uh, today. We're playing at home, so you kind of get excited about it a little bit, especially in transition. I think that's where we kind of turned the ball over. It was one stretch. We turned it over like three or four times in a row, and it was all off stops and trying to, you know, get a fast break. So. I think in that moment, we got to settle down, get the ball in T's hand, and then just run the play instead of just always trying to play so fast. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Right, we got head coach Kurt Miller. We're going to do an opening statement and then pass around for questions, please. We've talked uh, a lot in this series of how hard we have to play and how trying to make it messy. We got the game the way that we truly believe we can be successful. Um, our defensive energy and effort uh, was unwavering tonight. Um, even when they made some plays. Um, so excited again that we got the game in the style of play that we think we can be very successful. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to the finish line, but our players have to leave confidence that we can make games against Chicago messy and the type of style that we want and desire to have. Questions? Can you just speak to the impact that uh, Natisha made tonight in your offense and just on defense as well? Yeah, the first, uh, you know, really uh, an important first half as we were playing inside out, they were sending a lot of feet in the paint and they had four and five people in the paint all night, just really challenging us on the perimeter. And uh, she was the recipient of actions back out to her at times and she was efficient made some threes um you know was really pleased she didn't score in the second half i believe but uh, you know she had an overall really good game and competing against Slute is not easy and uh competing on all the actions that they run for her uh just you know was really really solid for us all night long Kurt, the fourth quarter, I think for about four minutes, no one scored. Uh, the defense was good on both ends. It felt like you was in a schoolyard and like next point wins, and they got that next point. Was that how you felt like if you could just get that one basket during that stretch, you might be able to pull the one out? Yeah, you know, what was it, Doug? 66, 64, forever. Um, something, you know, you kept looking at the scoreboard. It was still 66, 64, and you just wondered if one team could have an offensive run. like. It was to the point where if a team could put back-to-back -back baskets together, it was gonna have all sorts of momentum. But we had some, in those empty possessions, we had turnovers, uh, I felt like we were rushed at times and we just couldn't put together that offensive run when we needed it because defensively we were just continuing to get stops. Kurt, just in terms of JJ, two parts to a one, Obviously, after six shot attempts in the first quarter, they limited her to, I think, one or two each of the quarters the rest of the way. Um, you, it, do you need her? Do you want her to be forcing the action a little bit more than passing out of double teams when it's, you know, the reigning MVP of the lead? And just related to it, 
you pull it with 337 to go, make the decision a little smaller with Courtney. Uh, does one lead to the other in terms of that decision? Yeah, you know, they're trying to limit uh, shots by Jonquel and shots by Bree Jones and really coming with doubles. And it's hard at times to score through that, step through that. I think they're making good plays out of doubles. And can we repost? Um, the challenge is trying to get them some touches before they're loaded up. Because once they get into the half court and they have their style of play defensively and schemes defensively situated, they're just sending so many bodies towards our post game. And so, you know, it's, it's difficult at times. Um, so, you know, again, um, everybody gets hung up on shot attempts. <laughs> Um, and it is like, are we taking good shots? Are we taking shots, um, you know, when we can get the spacing and, and them spread out? Um, and in stretches, we won that battle. In stretches, they congested us and forced us to play to different things. And then, you know, we, again, um, it's a rock fight. We want to make it a rock fight. Alexa, uh, just, you just the, the other side. Yeah, just the, the other side of it. The, with 3.37 to go, is it just, is that about spacing? What, uh, taking her out of the game at that moment, I was wondering what you were seeing in that moment where it was 66-64 and basically neither side was getting what they wanted offensively. Yeah, you know, again, um, it's sometimes offense, defense, and it's so much harder at the pro level to do that because, um, you know, unless there's a dead ball, you can't, you know, the offense, defense, or substituting at the pro level is difficult. Um, at times, you know, now can we get them spread out and moving with a smaller lineup? Um, you know, what, you know, what is that going on? I have to make those calls, um, difficult decisions all the time. Um, they at times don't come with as many doubles to Bree Jones. So at times, do we get the ball inside uh, with spacing that we want at times because they send so much uh, attention to JJ? So, you know, it's, it's, you know, kind of a feel and there's never, you know, it, there's always going to be second guesses when you don't win and, you know, and no one says much when, when you lose, there's second guesses when you win. You know, a lot of times people be like, you know, saying that you push the right button. So searching when we were struggling to score and trying to find some, some more movement um, late in that game when we were struggling to score. Go ahead, Alyssa. Kurt, um, according to our stats people, you guys shot 16 for 41 um, on shots five feet or closer to the rim. Is that, that's very unlike the team. Was that, you think, more just mental and to once maybe people start missing, it's, it's a little contagious? Or do you also credit Chicago's defense and especially their length that they do bring on the court? Yeah, I didn't hear what the percentage that you said. It was, but uh, 16 for 41, 39%. Five feet or closer. Yeah. Well, first, they're incredibly long. Uh, Emma's deceivingly or very long. Candace and Stevens are obviously um very long so there's moments when you think we're getting um point blank shots but their length can bother us so first it's a it's a credit to their length around the rim they're not easy to score against um you know and then you know it's just at times you try so hard to get the catch and to get things that uh we we weren't efficient but we have to be we have to we have to be more efficient around the rim but it's a credit you know they're long they're not they're not easy to score against jacqueline kurt the game was definitely physical and chicago was held to 37 uh, percent from the field did you feel like the game was messy enough um, from what you guys were really trying to achieve and you know was there any point in kind of that last half of the quarter uh, fourth quarter where you felt like chicago kind of ended up imposing their style of play on you you know we we got them to miss 44 shots right and they only scored 30 points in the paint again um 
12, 14 points below their average in the paint. So we did a really nice job protecting the paint. They're the number one team in the league in points in the paint. And so, yes, I thought we really did a decent job of getting it to the, our style. Game two is their style. Game one and three was our style. They won tonight in our style of game. But, you know, like I'm confident if we can get those games like that, that we can have success. Just a quick follow up kind of um, from three games of the series now, kind of what is your general takeaway for some of the offensive struggles? Um, I don't know if there's one thing, you know, like, again, um, I we're generating actions and, and movements to shots um, that we wouldn't dislike. Um, you know, the, the thing for us is, you know, continuing to get on the offensive glass for us is really important. We missed 43 shots, got 10 back. You know, we crept maybe, you know, we're, we, we crept a little bit higher with our offensive rebounding percentage. But again, that will be important for us throughout the series. Okay, we're going to finish up on Zoom first with Rafiq. This is Rafi going on to but that sports talk. The, the turnovers continue to be a problem as you, as you, as you, you turn the ball with like 17 times. Thoughts? Rafi, it's a little bit loud, but I think you asked about turnovers. Um, yes, like um, ours crept up there 17 tonight for 17 points. Obviously, uh, we, we didn't get them in double figure turnovers. So, you know, it, uh, a stat that was um, certainly a factor in the game. And again, we need to get uh, shots on goal and, and really value each and every possession. Appreciate the insight. Good luck. Last question, Stephen. Go ahead on Zoom. How you doing, Coach Stephen Garner from Nuts and Bolt Sports? So you spoke about Natisha Heidemann's um, early scoring and how she didn't necessarily score much in the second half, but she also didn't have any turnovers in this game. Um, and it, it kind of speaks to, like, the level of composure that she had with the variance, the varying schemes that they're giving her. Um, how would you kind of grade how she played today? And do you feel like that's something that she can sustain going into the game for? Again, it's a little bit loud, but, yeah, Natisha had um, – a really nice game, you know, grades out real high offensively, was a spark for us in the first half, was efficient with her three point shooting. Um, she was able to get us into actions that we liked. Um, I thought, you know, gave us momentum in the first half. In the second half, you know, while uh, the shots weren't as easy to come by, she continued to play really, really hard and competed at the defensive end against Slute and all the actions that she put her in. So, you know, really pleased with the growth of Natisha this season. She's really um, have played herself into um, a really, really talented guard. And uh, if she can keep that up, it bodes well that we are still in this series and believe we can win it. Thanks coach. Thanks everyone. Thank you.